Izzy has joined us, um, as well as John and his wife Maria. So um, just a few words about Izzy. Um, he is a trained hospice dog, um, so he's very um, at ease in the library. However, if you just refrain from grabbing or putting your face very close to his, because that tends to bother him. So, but um, he, you know, he's pretty at ease here, so I wouldn't worry about him. Um, it's just a way of looking at these different perspectives. You know, when we get a dog, first thing we do with them is, is to stop them from doing all the things they want to do. And our definition of a good dog is a dog that only does the things we like to do. So we kind of go to war with them from the beginning. Um, and, and, and dogs, in fact, live very constrained lives in America. They can't really go anywhere. They can't make a lot of decisions. Um, and they're very frustrated. And, and the whole idea of getting a dog and training it is to, to teach them to not do all the things they like to do. Um, so there's a tension right off the bat, which everybody recognizes, people yelling at dogs all the time, and really a, a, a kind of cultural collision. <clears throat> this idea kind of led me to think about a novel, because I live with a working dog, Rose, if you know about her, she's more famous than I am, she's on the cover of several books, and, um, and uh, she cannot work a room like this, if she, if she were here, you'd all be moving that way. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Um, she's a working dog who does get to make decisions does really get to live her life. Um, she came to the farm when she was six months old. She said she most of that time. And, um, and she, um, she really gets to make decisions and choices that dogs don't get to make. So I've seen her evolve over the years in ways that you don't really get to see dogs evolve. Um, she works. She, she knows much better than I do what's going on at the farm. She makes better decisions than I do, better choices about her life. Um, um, I decided to think about, Rose does so many things, she saved my life several times. We were on the farm recently when uh, the ATV came across a doe that was stuck in a pasture gate. <clears throat> had been stuck there all night, was bleeding. Um, I tried to get near her to open up the gate and I couldn't get near her, she was kind of kicking out of me. Um, and I of course have no idea what to do about that. Um, uh, upstate there, there's no 911 to call. There's no uh, but I saw Rose begin to kind of go to work with me, and she kind of sized up the situation. She started going around the other side of the dough. When I would get close, and the dough would lash out at me, and Rose would bark, and kind of catch her attention, and pull her head back. <clears throat> and really, over the course of maybe 20 or 30 minutes, I saw that she had managed to engage the dough with her eyes and pull her head away from me, <clears throat> and, and really had her full attention, to the point where I could slip in and unlatch the gate and open it. She got out and ran away. <clears throat> and I'm really interested with what's going on inside of the, the dog's mind. You know, it would be very easy to tell the story and say what people would like you to say, which is, well, she just wanted to save the dog. Um, you know, she's a heroic dog and she loves wildlife and she wanted to save her. Or she wanted to save me uh, from another stupid, incompetent decision. <laughs> um, but I think what's really going on is something just much more interesting and very different. Um, I realized that I really didn't know how she talked. Most people have no idea how their dogs think. They're always telling you the dog is happy, the dog is mad, she's annoyed because they went to work, she's jealous, um, she has separation anxiety, uh, and all these human things that we put on them. Uh, when in fact none of those things are really possible because dogs don't have language and they don't have our emotions. They have language that they're their own, and they have their own thought process, and they have their own emotions, but they're not like ours. Um, and Rose doesn't function out of love. She's certainly capable of that. She functions out of a mix of instincts, experience, genetics. Um, and, and the kind of remarkable mind of a dog. I started talking to behaviors, because uh, my idea was to tell the story from the dog's point of view. So I did. And in a library, you'll appreciate that's kind of tricky, because it doesn't have any language. So how is she supposed to tell you what's going on? So uh, I have an editor uh, uh, in New York who is actually very much like Rose. Um, she's a working woman, she's very focused, she's very tough, um, and uh, you know, the editors are not supposed to be editing books anymore, but uh, my editor did not get that memo. Uh, so when I sent the chapters off, it came back very quickly, 50 or 60 pages of blistering observation. Um, but we had this really great collaboration because she, she did have a lot of the characters that she wrote, and she's really a focused, strong, working woman who also has an emotional side that you don't see. So it became a great collaboration, really. Um, and it needed to be a novel because, obviously, it wasn't true. So the idea was uh, 
to put the dog in a situation without people under a lot of pressure. What would a working dog do if she were left alone in a blizzard? The farmer was gone and she had to deal with this reality herself. Um, would she abandon the enterprise? How would she deal with coyotes? How would she help the sheep? Would she not help the sheep? And Rose and I have been through a lot of blizzards together, really too many. And I've seen her uh, very dutifully <coughs> dig for hours to get through the sheep, to move them down the hill, to get them down to me, to get them to the feeders. Um, I've seen her kicked by donkeys and run over by sheep and, and, uh, and butted by rams. And, uh, she really perseveres. She really stays with it. She really gets it done all the time. And I knew when I saw the dome in the fence that she was going to figure out something to do about it. And we did. And together, we did together. <clears throat> when I was talking to these behaviors, consensus I was finding was that dogs think very much like autistic children, that they have a series of images. They don't think in words, they think in sensory images. And these images come from a variety of places. First, their genetic memory is enormous, going back thousands of years of experience of working with people and reading. Um, it would be affected by the relationship with people, by their siblings, by the litter experience, um, and by their life experience. They also, uh, I think we often forget this, are receiving images that are beyond our imagination. Dogs smell maybe 100,000 times better than we do. Um, and they see things we don't see, and they hear things we don't see. And one of my favorite passages in the novel has Rose running through the woods and picking up a million stories uh, from smells of blood, insects, mice, coyotes, <coughs> and things that had been there for weeks or there years ago that only she can, can sense. <clears throat> and all of these stimulus are pouring into her brain at this astonishing speed, like a microprocessor, really like a video game. And as images appear, her instincts react to them. Now, the, the thing is that none of this happens with words. Dogs don't have narratives. So they're not telling stories. They're just reacting. And, and dogs have really learned, probably the, the greatest readers of human emotion in, in the animal world, even in the people world. Um, dogs smell emotion, they sense it, and that's why they get to sleep in bed and raccoons don't get to sleep in bed. Because <laughs> raccoons don't do that. Um, and Izzy will look at you and put his head on your knee and, wow, what a wonderful dog he is. I really love you, Izzy. Let me give you a biscuit. <laughs> so he's worked this out. He's figured this out. Um, but, but it's really about work and instincts for them. Um, and and uh, the remarkable thing about it is that I think it's much more interesting than we think it is. I think the words we put into their heads are a lot less interesting.